Welcome to Newport News. Newport News is an urban division school that we're visiting. Newport News has 40 schools total in their division, a student population of military students in the north and some shipyard builders in the south, and a lot of students, new students, who have English as their second language. Let's go figure out what type of innovations going on in the Newport News City Schools. So today, um, we are going to um, take a journey um, that's uh, indicative and reflective of our Valen learning journey. So um, Newport News Public Schools, uh, our project for Valen was um, to really develop our profile of a graduate for our school division. And under the leadership of uh, Dr. James Pohl, who's our new Chief Academic Officer, um, we have a team that I am part of, which is our Valen group, and we have been, um, as part of this process, really trying to define what are the attributes we want our students to have when they graduate. So what are those skills that are important to um, important for Newport News Public School students. And um, we've engaged stakeholders um, from the community and those stakeholders are um, faith-based organizations, informal ed, um, post-secondary, so we have a whole um, conglomerate of uh, folks that come together that are uh, representative of the community. In this work, we know we've got the magnet programs and we know we have the pockets, but we want to make sure that every graduate in Newport News Public Schools ha has the opportunity to develop those attributes that we all determine are important. And today we, I, we are going to highlight some of our pockets of innovation. So all of the schools that you're going to visit today, with the exception of one academy that we still um, will take a trip to, are all just regular schools that have pockets of innovative work and um, I'm excited that you guys are gonna come with us on this journey. So um, what type of class is this? So this is our resource class for our STEM students. So they come in here and they are going to be given a design brief and they're going to use their um, science, technology, engineering, and math skills in order to create a product. And then we test it to see that they met all the criteria. So right now you're currently working on bridges. How did you come up with this concept? Well, bridges are a very big part of our area. So we are surrounded by water on just about every side. So you have got to take a bridge to get to certain places. Many of our kids are not familiar with a lot of the bridges here in Hampton Roads. So what we had them do was go ahead and take one bridge from this Hampton Roads area. They had to research it, check the safety, see when it was built. And then they are now trying to build a replica. Well, one of the major struggles is that it takes a whole lot of materials to do stuff like this. So we have started a uh, recycling program here where teachers and staff and students bring me in recyclable materials that we can later use in different projects. Another one, as you guys have probably seen walking around, it takes a lot of feedback because the kids are constantly needing help and constantly needing assistance. So you have to be able to guide them without giving them the answer. How do you think teachers can incorporate some of these lessons into their regular, like, standard lesser plans. I actually think it's easier than most teachers think. So one of the major things that sixth grade has to be able to do, and all grade levels, is they have to be able to measure. So for my STEM class, how I teach them how to use a ruler and a meter stick is that they first build a catapult. And then they have the fun building the catapult, and they have to do design, and they learn about simple machines. And then they have to test it and measure how far they're able to fling their projectile, which they're learning how to use a meter stick, but they don't actually realize they're learning how to use a meter stick because they're just trying to see how well their catapult worked. I like the creativity and how you can use this scrap and cardboard boxes or anything else to make something cool. In this class we get to build different structures out of random pieces like popsicle sticks, toothpicks, foil, and um, other classes we don't get to build and use our imagination like we did. And we get to make it how we like it. So how, okay, how many do you think we should have? Well, we could put the three. We no, could do two. the popsicle stick here because it has a hole there. When you have like a difference in opinion, you could either like show different ways, like show why said, one of them would work. Yeah, better. why what would work better? And or like, we kind of, kind of mix them out. together. Mm -hmm. Like we'd kind of combine them yeah. into one that would make it better. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like. Um, because we get to build things and test them out. We built a catapult and had to launch a marshmallow. Um, we had to take a spoon and put it on a cup and we raised it a little so it would shoot further. 
So we are making a bridge that um, it like it has um, an arch which um, helps it distribute um, the weight and then the triangles which makes them um, it stronger. And so um, our dynamic on this is to um, make it strong, but and because it's the challenge is to make it strong and long, but on water. So you have to think about like how is um, this going to affect that. So it's a lot of the cause and effect relationship. But it's it's a lot different because it teaches you um, it teaches you a lot about two subjects or more than two at once. I think the something that I like about this classroom is you know it's more constructive and the things you construct are fun. We built like these capital projects and we Hold on, I'm just gonna write one. All right, so we, built, we basically built like a catapult, and we had a marshmallow in there, and we had to like pull something back, and then just launch it, see which one went the furthest. How did that go? Um, it was pretty fun for the rest of everyone, but me, we had to do some partners, and and me and my partners broke, like literally. It, it, we pulled it back, and it just snapped in half. That class is a class that where all my like science projects that I had, we had like maybe like two, but their whole class is based on just projects. And I remember learning simple machines back in sixth grade, but we learned it like on a textbook through different like that way. And just seeing how they learn how to measure things through the catapult and create a simple machine was a way um, I would have benefited more from actually learning some of the machines better. And it was really interesting and very inspiring to be in that classroom. Here we are at Discovery Stone Academy Elementary in Newport News. Um, I'm really excited to figure out what type of innovation that they're incorporating in the classrooms and what actually a STEM Academy is. So Discovery STEM Academy is um, the only STEM school that we are visiting on this tour, but this is our elementary STEM school. Um, everything about this school um, at the heart is built around integrative STEM. And um, the school itself, the building, you know, it's a beautiful space, but it's also a learning tool. So there's educational signage, teachers were involved with the development, um, community partners were involved, and um, even down to the furniture, everything supports the curriculum and innovative learning. So that's what you're going to kind of see here today and what you'll see in the space. Our first stop is going to be the Tinker Lab, and that's our school's makerspace. My name is Danielle Joyner. I am the STEM lead slash coordinator here at Discovery STEM. And the Tinker Lab is the innovation stations where you kind of come to do a little bit of everything. Um, whether it's whole group, small group, or individual, this is where you come to get your thinking done. Yes. What, what was our, our wonder wall question? We were wondering why, why, this so red? Red? why everything was red, right? Why, why was everything red? Did we find it out? Okay. I love my flexibility here. And, what, and then, so like right now we do stations, sometimes we move around and they'll rotate between stations. Sometimes I'll do whole group over there. And uh, like my fourth and fifth, we're on an um, independent study where they have all the assignments in Google Classroom and there's materials that they need for them but depending on where you are is where you're at. So sometimes I'll come and I'll have the folders like, all right, I know you five are ahead, so go sit at the pink tables and get going. I know you 10 need a little bit more. You haven't finished assignment four, so go over here, and you guys are on assignment three, and I need to go step by step with you because you're just, you're not getting it on your own. So it lets me really be flexible and differentiate in a way that being in the classroom um, makes it a little bit more difficult because of proximity. Like, I mean, I can, I'll do whole group if I have to, but I don't, I don't ever leave whole group knowing who got what, but versus when I live here, like I know I have a pretty good idea, especially if I'm walking around with my checkboard. Like today, they're just doing stuff on their own, so I'm not really assessing what they're learning. But like when we do experiments and stuff like that, I have a checkboard and I'm kind of assessing, doing a formative assessment of who does what. I walk out of that knowing 10 times more what my kids know than when I was up in front of the whole room because there, there's no physical way to focus on what they're all saying and doing. Like, we're, we're not omnipotent, so we can't. So when I walk around and then they're working in groups like this and they're doing stuff for themselves, I ask two or three questions and I learn absolutely what you know because you're doing it versus who was brave enough to raise their hand in front of their peers. 
even if one person is high, like on a different level than the other student, they're still making sure they get every bit by bit because they're in these small groups working, which is really important, I feel like, for students that don't learn faster than other students. Next stop, Dimby Early Childhood Center. My name is Cassandra Pearson and I'm a teacher here at Denby Early Childhood Center. And we are using Cyberstein, the Code and Go robot mouse, and we're working on cooperation, working with our friends, taking turns, making predictions about what will happen next. The kids really love any type of robot and technology, so we've been doing a lot of um, coding. The kids find that really exciting that they can actually make the robots move and do what they want. And they're learning how to debug whenever they make a mistake. Their friends like to help them. And they're just, you know, learning new things every day. We have a large military population at our school, and so we got uh, the Cybersteam grant. And so we got a lot of new technology, robots, um, Lego, Steam Park, Coding Express, which we're doing next month. And we're just working on teaching the teachers the new technology and then they're, you know, exploring with their children and we're learning. So this is actually our smart notebook software and the teacher built a, an activity for her students to do that is self-directed and self-correcting. So when the student touches um, her, their picture, it links to a page in the software. Um, and you can even record audio on it as well. And it uh, connects it not only to their name, but also to the phonological awareness, like the letter and the sound it makes. So the students are actually matching the letters and then writing their name. And when you come to this back button, it goes right back to the first page so that another uh, student can have a turn as well. I like to learn about? Um, like, um, like new books and new toys. About... In preschool this year, we are part of a Cybersteam grant um, that we got from the military. And so each month, we are introducing a new type of computer coding program or activity for our students to learn um, how to get into the whole workforce of computer security. Um, I had a real world aha moment the other day. I was talking to my sister, who is a project manager in Washington, D.C., and she does a lot of, of the technology work for um, the government side of things. And she was kind of complaining about um, how hard it is for them to find people that can do the kind of work that they need. Like they can't get their projects finished because they're not, there aren't enough certified workers. And so she was talking about the military and how the military is really worried these days about cybersecurity and trying to get people trained for those types of positions. So I was like, oh, well, we do that at, at our school. We do all sorts of stuff for um, Cybersteam. And so she was interested to hear about it, and I told her about the, um, the wonderful grant that we got from the military and how they're trying to start really young and start teaching kids really early how to think and, you know, in, a, in that way. And she was, she was just amazed. She could not believe all the things that they were doing when I described the activities. She was impressed that it was starting that early. And then because she works with the military more on filling jobs, she was really impressed to hear that they were investing back into the community and um, helping all of our schools with the grants. We're at Mitchville High School about to check out some science classes that have a little bit of innovation in them here in Newport News. Let's go take a look. We do either a project like this every day or a virtual one. That's why I have laptop computers over there. We'll do like the FET virtual learning type activities because I took modeling, and I don't mean this kind of modeling, I took <laughs> modeling education classes several years ago at JMU and I drank the Kool-Aid and it's the best way for kids to learn. I only teach, do one lecture per unit. They do better. They they balk at the beginning, don't they? We'd rather have you get up there and teach. But really, this is better for them. You learn by doing. I like this because it's like if Everyone certain can parts. Weigh in, yeah. yeah, certain parts I'm not good at. She might be good at. Yeah. So you play your part, and you get it done. 
I like interact. I'm very close with like basically all of my teachers. teachers. Yeah, we, all the relationships yeah. I have are really yeah. stable, and I like all of them. Um, yeah, it feels it feels like a family in that way too. Like I feel really connected with everyone. Yep, and this is how they learn. And you can see the calculations been done and the analysis. I don't have to teach scientific methodology separately. As you can see, they're performing. Learning in this area around this area is Bush Gardens, which is a it has a lot of roller coasters. So they're learning um, how to the roller coasters, how you have to calculate different forces and velocity in order for it to be safe, which was really cool, and just incorporating outside things and stuff in their neighborhood into their classrooms. Um, but overall, the atmosphere here is very, uh, the teachers have a great connection with the students, which I feel is very important, and it's a very respectable place to be. What's so special about the molecular cell and research class is because there are no standards and students are able to learn based on what they need, not being bound by standards. It allows us to be creative, allows us to explore, and uh, I think it's really where the learning is coming from is that we're not bound by standards. So it's different from other classes because it really like lets us learn. Okay, so like if you fail, it's like this isn't really a test grade, like this isn't to determine your grade or anything. So it's like it prepares you for college. I've created the class. So that's one of the benefits here is that the standard is what's the need? The need was uh, presented by students who are in college. These are deficits that we have, and so the class has been designed to prepare students for the challenges they're going to meet in college. And so with that, we, um, how do I assess them? They keep a lab notebook. So you know, each time we're moving through the different uh, skill sets and labs and experiments. And I think one of the big things in this class is to go from labs to experiments. So you teach skills in labs to then allow them to use those skills for experimentation. Pretty much our only requirements were do a science experiment, whatever you want. And so from there we were able to really explore uh, what we think is important in science. And within whatever limits we had in the school budget, we were able to carry out an experiment. So I think that's what make this, makes this one very unique, is there's a lot of autonomy on the students, there's a lot of um, being able to you know, fail and troubleshoot and learn from that and through real experience is going to be applicable later in life. So I think that's what makes this one so unique and so wonderful. So after visiting some schools in Newport News, I noticed that there's a lot of student agency going on in the classrooms. Students are taking control of their own learning, which is very nice and very refreshing to see.